Good morning, everybody. The Friday before Memorial Day weekend. Hope everybody's got some big plans uh, for some rest and relaxation um, and honoring uh, those who we honor during uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, so I'm Amy Loudermilk. I uh, manage the programs here at Arts Build, um, if you did not already know that. And today um, we have just a lot going on in-house at Arts Build that we just wanted to make sure that the community was aware of, as well as who to talk to if you've got questions about things. Um, but we've got a special program going on, uh, and I'd like to introduce Brianna Jones, who is our uh, Programs and Grants Coordinator, um, who's specifically working with our uh, Arts and Climate Project. And so Brianna is here um, to tell you about what's going on with that project, uh, or to even introduce the project to you for those of you who are not aware of what Arts Build is doing in the realm of arts and climate. So with that, Brianna, I hand things over to you, my dear. Hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to start by sharing my screen to give you a bit of visual as I talk. Um, but yes, the Chattanooga Art and Climate Project is really just getting started. We have our local artists um, selected. We're working on selecting our national artists, but the general summary of the project is an 18 month project to hire one national artist and three local emerging artists from the Rossville Boulevard Corridor um, to create works of temporary art addressing climate issues specific to the neighborhoods along the corridor. So um, when we say, climate issues specific to the neighborhood. What we're really talking about in the Rossville Boulevard area is the heat indexes, uh, high heat indexes, and the flooding situation in Rossville Boulevard. If you're familiar with the community, you may have witnessed uh, the lack of trees, the very uh, hot sidewalks, and also just general flooding around neighborhood areas. So really we want to address those main environmental issues with our project, but there's also potential to discuss more. Um, there's always a number of environmental risk in underserved communities. So we just wanna put those concerns first and that's kind of what centers our work. But the project's intention is really to connect artists uh, with communities most impacted by climate change to co-create works of art that inspire fire societal action for the betterment of Chattanooga. Um, we believe that arts can help us communicate, find common ground, and create innovative solutions for climate-driven problems. Uh, this is an 18-month residency, so we're really investing in process. Um, we want artworks, temporary artworks, to come out of this, but really it's about the engagement and the research and the um, growth of the artists throughout. That's our main and primary uh, goal with this project. So our artists uh, we've recently announced on our platforms have been chosen our local artists. We have Andy Ramirez, Chase Guajardo, and Aubrey Charnel. We are in the process of selecting our um, national artist, and we will be relying on our community partners and our committee to help us with that selection. Uh, we. Here is who has been working with us to help us develop our program to keep us um, considering all the aspects of community engagement that should be important in our selections of artists and in our um, process of developing these temporary artworks. Um, it's an exciting time and I'm happy that we are getting the ground um, basis of getting our artists and getting our community engagement underway. And I'm really excited to see what else uh, will come out of the project. So I do recommend following Arts Build, following our newsletter and kind of staying tuned so you can find ways to engage with the artists as they engage with the Rossville community and as they develop their art projects. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Brianna would, you, or Brianna, would you please share the names of the artists one more time who are who are working on this part, the local artists, just so everybody yeah. knows? Andy Ramirez, Chase Guajardo, and Aubrey Charnel. So, so. Um, does anybody have any questions about this project? About how you can support? Um, and for those of us who uh, will 
maybe join us later or uh, watch this from our YouTube page. I'm going to put uh, Brianna's uh, email in the chat. Um, we are so glad to have her on board and, and working on this very, very important project. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And so uh, really quickly, uh, the um, Sorry, uh, one of our, our speakers who was supposed to be here today, Cole Hunt, uh, who is with uh, Viking Woodcraft, uh, was here to uh, share some information about an event that's coming up next week, and it'll take place before our Friday community Zoom. So we just really wanted to make sure uh, that everyone was aware of it. So let's see here, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Um, there we go. Can everybody see that? Uh, it should say ready for a new convention. Okay, thank you. I've got dual screens right now. So uh, coming up June uh, 24th through the 29th, uh, it says 2024 uh, at the uh, Chattanooga Convention Center, We'll be, they'll be holding the annual painting and craft expo. Um, I'll have to ask about that because uh, they told me that it was happening this year and that's next year's day. So we'll have to double check that for you all, but um going to go ahead and uh, pop the um, website for that in our chat. Um, so if that's something you want to look into, feel free to do so. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know if you've got any questions about that and just explore that um, on your own. Um, we do have uh, quite a bit of stuff going on at Artsville that I just wanted to make sure uh, everybody was aware of. Um, the Holmberg Arts Leadership Institute, if you are not aware of that, is taking place. Uh, in our first, our new class starts in July. The deadline for the application for the Holmberg Arts Leadership Institute's 23-24 class uh, is coming up right after uh, Memorial Day weekend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the link to that application uh, in the chat box. We would love to have new homies with us if you partake or if you are a participant of that program. Uh, you are very respectfully known as a homie. And I know uh, TJ's on here and Miss Karen's on here. Y'all are all homies. Uh, Monica Ellison as well. So they can tell you all about it and what um, an experience that that is. Um, but please feel free to share this link that I just posted into the chat with your colleagues and with your contacts. Um, and yeah, so the close, the deadline for that is Friday, June the 2nd, 2023. Um, and about that program, we, in the past few years, we have uh, reimagined that program where we meet one Thursday evening a month. Uh, the meeting time is from 5.30 to 8.30 to accommodate everybody's busy workday schedules. Um, we typically meet um, at a different location around Chattanooga, uh, either with an organization or um, at a site that uh, where folks are working to support the arts and to really advocate for uh, our local arts community. This is a great networking opportunity for professionals uh, from all sectors. It's not just for artists and uh, arts organization, although um, they're all, you're always welcome. But it's a great networking opportunity for those from all sectors to come together and to learn and grow as arts advocates and to learn how to be uh, the best uh, networkers, the best fundraisers, the best board members they can be. And I know some of the folks who are on here right now, they have been called on by uh, our different arts organizations around Hamilton County to be board members based on their experience from the Arts Leadership Institute. So um, if you've got any questions about that, I'll pop my email address uh, in the chat box here in just a second. But there is another sign up that I wanted to make sure everybody knew about. Um, so Arts Build three times a year holds uh, Tech Goes Home for artists. 
And our summer program is specifically tuned for our high school creatives, so our young creatives in the community. So if you are a parent or a caretaker of a student who is um, a rising freshman through recent high school graduate, um, again, in the chat box, here is the application for the Tech Goes Home for the high school artist. So uh, our friend Dominique Whitaker, who is with Dynamo Studios and is also a teacher at Howard High School, uh, he works with me to instruct uh, 10 to 15 high school students. They spend 15 hours with us from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock each day, uh, June um, Let's see, I think it's the third through the ninth. Um, so that one o'clock to four o'clock time uh, lets us know that the kids are going to be good and awake uh, and they've had all their sleep that they can get. Um, so they'll meet with us for those three hours a day. And uh, Dominique takes the kids through uh, the Tech Coast Home curriculum, but it's specifically catered to them as young creatives. So we teach them how to safely and effectively promote themselves and professionally, I should say, promote themselves online, uh, as well as uh, how they can eventually monetize their work through their online presence. Um, we go through lots of internet etiquette, but also provide them with a lot of free resources for them as young professionals in the arts community. Um, so again, if you are a parent or a caretaker of a high school student in the Hamilton County area, uh, I hope you will encourage them to apply. We've still got some time for them to do so. The deadline to register is Friday, June the 2nd uh, by 3 p.m. So still some time to register there. Um, and then uh, just so everybody is aware, on June the 8th, we will be working with the Hinton Company uh, in regards to uh, DEIA staff retention. Uh, and so the sign up for that, I will post in the chat as well. Lots of sign ups for programs going on uh, that we wanted to share with you all. There we go. Um, and so if you have any questions about that, I'm putting my email address in the chat box so that you can reach out to me. Um, but please, please, please share these links with your contacts and networks so uh, that we have a growing awareness of what we're doing here at Artsville. So with that, I'm gonna hand things over to Melissa, the money lady at Arts, who likes to give away money at Artsville. Um, she's got some deadlines and some information that she wanted to share with everybody as well. Hi, as everybody knows, I'm Melissa. I'm the manager of grants and community engagement here at Arts Build. I have a couple announcements. Um, so currently live is a grant called Arts Builds Community. It's a grant through the Tennessee Arts Commission that we're the designated agency to facilitate the, um, the dis distribution of those funds and the projects and things of that nature. Um, if you're a 501c3, even if you're not an arts organization, but you're hoping to expand arts and culture in some capacity, you're eligible for that grant. It, the application is due July 3rd. That seems really far off, but it really isn't. So I would jump in there if you have some time this weekend to explore the application. So you can send me all your questions and things of that nature. Um, last year, we funded 14 organizations. We're hoping to um, fund more this year, thankfully. And so I'll put a link to the Tennessee Arts Commission so you can read about their grant. You apply through their portal. It's our one of our six grant programs that you actually apply through them versus us, even though we manage it. Um, before I move forward, do you have any questions about the Arts Builds community, which we call ABC? Um, questions, concerns, things of that nature. You said um, you can apply for it even if you're just an independent artist. Do you have to get like a sponsorship from a nonprofit or something like that? Yes, you have to. Uh, it has to be a 501c nonprofit who applies. So let's say you, you partner as an artist with an organization, they would apply. Um, it does require what's called a UEI number, which most um, nonprofits have at this point, which is the old dunes. It's the new way to do dunes. Um, so, but 
if you have an idea, you can reach out to me and maybe I can suggest a nonprofit who might not already be applying that would like to partner with you. So I can be a resource in that, in that capacity. Any other questions about Arts Builds Communities, the ABC grant? Awesome. Um, the other thing we have going on is um, our Community Cultural Connections Grant is about to reopen at the um, beginning of our new fiscal year, which is July 1. It's a, a, a rapid turnaround grant uh, up to $2,000. That grant, you don't have to be a 501c3. You can be an artist, an, an, an organization with or without the, uh, the 501c3 designation, a community group whose goal is to expand arts and culture to traditionally underserved members of our commu community. So it's a pretty wide guidelines. Um, our next community Zoom, I'm really excited about. It's on June 30th. I'm going to put the link. We're going to have four organizations who were funded this current fiscal year to talk about the process. We're going to have Crabtree Farms of Chattanooga. We're going to have the Shambla Center for Children. We're going to have Move and Groove Kids. And we're going to have the Saudi Daisy Community Library. What they're going to do is talk about what they did this past year and also tips and tricks. Um, you know, what um, they thought about the process of CCC, what was easy or maybe confusing to them to support future applicants. And then I will spend the rest of the time talking about the application and some grant 101 tips and tricks, because a lot of the folks who apply to this grant might be new to grant writing. So I'm gonna give kind of the nuts and bolts of what grant writing is um, to help make that process very easy and streamlined, because our goal is not to be tedious, but actually just to push forward arts and culture and expand that through our community. So I'll put the link in that. Um, so those are the two main initiatives I have going on right now. Of course, um, we're always looking for folks in the community who want to be grant reviewers um, for the arts Builds community, for CCC. We have our racial equity grant coming up, you know, another round likely of arts artist works. So if you're ever interested in being a reviewer, um, your voice is very important at the table. Y'all help make those decisions on what arts and culture looks like for Hamilton County, Chattanooga. So you can always email me and um, we can talk about what that means. Um, any questions about CCC, being a grant reviewer, um, arts builds communities, things of that nature. Okay, well, that's great. I do see some CCC recipients on the Nicole and Moving Groove Kids and Emma, all the folks. So um, uh, CCC is a, a really great grant program that I hope you'll take advantage of. Melissa, and as you were mentioning, in mentioning the July dates, um, I... Uh, don't know how I forgot this, but uh, we have a special teacher training opportunity. So Arts Build works uh, very closely with the Arts Space Collaborative, Hamilton County Schools, WTCI, and the Theater Center as the Kennedy Center uh, Partners in Education. Um, and through that, we are able to provide free workshops and professional development for teachers. So uh, I mentioned before, if you know of any students, if, if you're a caretaker or parent of students, but if you are a teacher, have friends who are teachers or educators in the community. Uh, so this would be early childhood educators, uh, preschool, um, if we've got some homeschool educators, they are welcome to attend this free five-day workshop at the Challenger Center at UTC, where we will be working with the Art Space Collaborative on a summer camp for teachers. So it's an option for 20 hours of professional development for local educators. Um, you do not have to be an educator with Hamilton County Schools specifically. Uh, again, you could be a homeschool educator, private school, charter school, you are welcome to attend. 
Uh, we'll be meeting from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day that week with an hour for lunch in between. Lunch will be provided by our friends at UTC. Um, and days are going to be filled with uh, creative strategy, curricular connections, and collaborative planning. This is an arts integration summer camp. This is not limited to our fine arts educators in the community. A lot of times there's confusion about the term arts integration. When we say arts integration, we're talking about integrating the arts in all subject areas to assist with teaching and learning. Um, so if, again, if you know of a local educator, we would love to have them attend this conference. I just shared the sign-up sheet. Um, if you do share this with a Hamilton County educator, please have them reach out to me because we have two different registration links. One is for Hamilton County Schools teachers specifically because they have um, a specific protocol for teachers to sign up for professional development like this. And then we have a separate sign up for um, homeschool parents, early childhood, um, Head Start, um, private school and charter school educators who want to come in and start the school year uh, with 20 hours of professional development. I know when I was in the classroom, that was hard to come by in one fell swoop. So um, great opportunity for teachers there. Um, so uh, now we open up the floor to our friends here from the community. I know I see several folks who have programming going on at the moment, so we would love to hear from you if you have updates or information that you would like to share with our greater arts community here in Hamilton County about what you've got going on. So just go ahead and jump in there. No need to send a chat. I'll jump in. Hey, it's I knew Emma you Collins. would. I, you knew I would. Yeah. Uh, Emma Collins with Scenic City Shakespeare. Uh, everyone should do the Holmberg Arts Leadership Program. It's amazing. I just was in it last year and it was fantastic. But what I want to tell you about is we have two more weekends of Shakespeare in the Park left at Greenway Farm. We have extended our, we were supposed to close this weekend tonight uh, and tomorrow we have shows at Greenway Farms. We have now extended to do two more shows, June 2nd and 3rd as well. They start at 730. They are free. You can bring your lawn chairs and your picnics. Uh, there are food trucks that come and join us. And it's a wonderful show. It's a magical evening in the park. The sun is literally beaming on Hickson right now. So it's going to be a beautiful evening. And we hope you'll join us. Uh, the production is uh, funded through an Arts Build Communities grant. And we are so thankful for that. Uh, I'm also available to help with if any questions about the process because we did just go through it. And Melissa, I'm going to close it out as soon as we close. Um, but yes, thank you all. And I hope you will come see the show because it is a magnificent experience, if I do say so myself. Emma, I've got my tickets for tonight. Um, so our friend uh, Rachel Carroll uh, with the Theater Center says she doesn't, uh, unfortunately, she doesn't have a microphone, but she wanted to make sure everybody knew about the Theater Center's run of August Wilson's The Piano Lesson that will begin June 9th. You can get tickets or learn more about this performance at theatercenter.com and uh, theater center all end with the R-E. So make sure you get that spelling right. Thanks, Rachel. Really appreciate that. And I'll add to that. Um, so that is part of the Chattanooga Festival of Black Arts and Ideas. There are, you can find their website. They have a whole host of events happening throughout um, June. Um, so check that out for sure. And also our friend Ricardo Morris, who is in charge of that festival. He actually came and spoke to the community at last month's community Zoom. So um, if you wanna hear Ricardo talk about that, just head on over to Arts Build's YouTube page and catch the community Zoom from last month. Oh, thanks, Emma, for putting the reservation link for Shakespeare in the Park. Appreciate that. That's in the chat, everybody. Are there any others? Um, I have a just a general question, like okay. I'm waking up. Okay. So the community grants, they're due on July 2nd, or they could start being submitted then? 
um, the, the community cultural connections. Yeah. Um, so I will make that application live the, the day of the community Zoom, June 30th. So how the process works in that um, it um, we have three reviewers who review up to four applications a month. They review them on the, um, the fourth Wednesday of each month. Um, applications to be considered in that month, if you're one of the four, have to be submitted by the second Tuesday of the month. And so I will explain all of that in the June 30th um, community Zoom. So it's really well spelled out. Um, so I, I highly encourage folks to join us for that community Zoom. I will give you the nuts and bolts, making it really easy um, and a non-tedious process. But yes, June 30th, it'll open up. Okay, neat. So I'm, I'm getting this swing of things here. And then I'm excited to hear about everything that's going on. I'm working on putting together some chamber music concerts and things um, out in the Hicks and Saudi area. But as I'm getting ready for that, I'm thinking about putting things on a YouTube channel to kind of highlight what I'm doing here in Chattanooga. Is there a way, like, can I submit that to the newsletter and see if anyone wants to subscribe to my YouTube channel? And then I could, if you guys have things for your organizations, we could kind of Absolutely. That. Yes. Send, um, and Nicole, you have my email. Send um, the link okay. to your YouTube and we could talk about your chamber music because Nicole um, was a recipient of a CCC grant and had a couple concerts recently in this last this fiscal year. So, yeah, you have some great things going on. Thank you. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thanks. Nicole, could you put your email in the um, chat also, please? Yes. Thank you. Anybody else want to jump in and tell us about what's going on? Okay, well, um, uh, I've just got a couple more things. Um, if you all know of events that are happening um, or the organization you're with or as an artist, if you have any special information, please do send that to us so that we can include it in our weekly newsletter called ArtsWire that hits email inboxes every Thursday. Um, if you are not subscribed to ArtsWire, I'm gonna share my screen real quick and I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Uh, you can go to the Arts Build webpage. Um, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of our homepage here, see right there where it says, want to know about more about the arts, you can enter your email address there. And that's where uh, we'll capture your information and we'll send those emails out to you. Just like Melissa said, uh, our email newsletter contains lots of information about uh, positions that might be available with arts organizations, performances, exhibitions, gallery openings, uh, you name it, open calls for uh, grants uh, and also for deadlines for signing up for our programs here at Arts Build. Um, so please, please take advantage of that. I know lots of folks uh, have gotten, taken advantage of opportunities through that information. Um, thank you, Nicole. Nicole just put her email address in the chat. Appreciate that. Um, so, oh, Robin, yes, the dates for the um, Educator Institute. It's the last full week in July, so July 24th through 28th, right before teachers go back to school. Um, and a lot of folks have in services before we kick off the 23-24 school year. So that last full week in July is where we'll be over at uh, the Challenger Center and all of that information is contained in the registration link that I sent sent out. So please feel free to click on it to get more information, but do share that with local educators. And again, it's, they do not have to be Hamilton County Schools teachers specifically. Hey, Amy. Yes. Um, I would just want to throw in that um, I, I know UTC has their um, summer conducting institutes for um, Choral instrumental majors, and they just open that up to a fully audited uh, for free for local teachers. 
um, you can take the courses for you know working towards graduate work. But they've also opened it up, and I think also to neighboring counties um, beyond Hamilton County. So um, I don't know the connections to secondary choral instrumental directors, but that would be a, a great addition too. Um, I think they're last couple weeks of June. Okay, great. Thank you, Vincent. And if anybody has any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to connect you to our friends over uh, at UTC. We work frequently with um, many of the uh, fine arts departments over there as well as the uh, educator program. All righty. Well, just like a holiday weekend, we're right at 11 o'clock. So I'm going to uh, call it for uh, today, this month's community Zoom, um, and let you all go forth into your holiday weekend, uh, wishing you safe travels and uh, safe enjoyment of hopefully what will be good weather um, and uh, some restful time for, I know we've got students who just got out of school and um, our educators who do so much for them. So. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, again, if you have questions, feel free to email any of us here at ArtsBuild, Amy, Melissa, or Brianna, um, just our first names at artsbuild.com. You can also find them on the website, uh, but I uh, have loved having you today and everybody just have a great weekend. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye guys. Bye.